Welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel. As you're hearing, uh, Trenton Military Weather Station in uh, Trenton, Ontario, Canada. We're going to talk about the terms we hear all the time. So each video is going to have a specific term, a radio um, word that you might have seen or see all the time, or read about. And it's um, always something that people are a little, um, you know, kind of not sure what it means and, and how do I know if a radio is, is good in that respect or not. So we're going to go through all of the different words you might hear or come across when looking at radios. First, selectivity. What does it mean? What is radio selectivity? So if you're selective... What does that mean? That means you won't, you know, choose everything. You select specific things. You select what you like. In a radio, radio selectivity, it means you select the signal you want to hear. And that has a few different things that can happen with selectivity. Because selectivity is not just one aspect. It's several different aspects of the radio's performance. So what is selectivity? It's the ability of your radio to focus on the signal that you want to hear and just push everything else away because that's not what you want. You want to have just what you hear. Right now, I was listening to Trenton Military. I don't want to hear what's next to it. I don't want to hear anything else than Trenton Military when I tune this frequency because that's why I'm tuning there for that also means it's selective in a way because I am able to pinpoint that signal on 6754 kilohertz and not hear whatever else is around it. Selectivity has to do with a few factors. First, the ability to dish out or remove what's on each side. We talked about bandwidth, and this radio has, of course, bandwidth. You see I'm using three right now, but I can use different bandwidths on single sideband. Um, that is one part of selectivity. The filters that help you lower the amount of information that the radio gets from other frequencies around it, and that's the bandwidths. Bandwidths, of course, come in different ways. There's mechanical bandwidths. There are electric, electronic bandwidths made with components. There's uh, DSP-type bandwidths, which are here, which are shaped by a digital signal processing unit. And they, of course, are made to remove what's next to it, up or down the frequency, so that you focus on what's there. They are important, the bandwidth, and the selectivity with bandwidth is important because it, in a crowded band, if you've heard, for example, a ham radio contest, and with all the stations packed one next to each other, having good selectivity with the bandwidths is amazing because it helps you just pinpoint the ham station you want to contest and not hear everybody else around it. Same thing for the international broadcast bands. You want to hear your station. You don't want to hear what's 5 or 10 kilohertz above or below. So the bandwidth helps you and helps, you, helps your radio be more selective. But it's one aspect of selectivity. Selectivity is more than that. We talked about overloading. Overloading also is an aspect of selectivity. If your radio has good selectivity, it should technically not receive a undesired signal on the same frequency that you're listening to what you want. So selectivity also goes with the ability of the radio to resist anything around it that shouldn't be there. So that is another part of the selectivity aspect of a radio. You know... Um, I talk often that each radio doesn't have the same level of, you know, resistance to overload. So it's part of the circuitry of its selectivity and other terms we're going to talk about, actually. So that is another aspect of selectivity, the ability to remove from the receiver anything else that is not um, there. So it could be... Um, image rejection also, 
a radio that doesn't is a single conversion, for example, an image could show up on the frequency of a uh, broadcast you're listening to. That happens with cheap radios. Um, remember my um, Realistic DX100, my first radio, that happens often. Um, you think that there's some broadcast over what you're listening to, and then you realize it's an image of someone else on another frequency that is showing up there. It's not much of a problem today if you're using most of the modern radios, like what you have here, and even the cheapest radios, like the Texan PL330, the XH Data, uh, or even the RadiWow. You know, they are all double conversion and all have resistance to images. So they're pretty good for that. There's, of course, spurious signal selectivity, which could be a different thing. It might not show up as a broadcast over what you're listening to. It may be simply an unwanted signal that has an interaction with the electronics of the radio. Some strong signal, something out there is making your radio less sensitive or, or noisier, or it creates all sorts of weird um, artifacts that shouldn't be there. It's another type of uh, signal selectivity that a radio can be good at removing. Um, there are different levels of selectivity in receivers. Yes, of course. And these go a lot with the amount of money you pay for the radio. So a desktop high-end receiver, usually in selectivity is pretty good. Usually image rejection and all the spurious signals you don't really see much on a higher end free radio. Like my Icon, my CRD500 will not overload in general, will be resistant to even very strong nearby signals. So it's part of the selectivity of your radio, being able to pinpoint and give you only what you want. Now there's different ways to cope with all of that. Uh, if selectivity problem is a station nearby, five kilohertz above or below, well, in case of a radio like this one, you can use a bandwidth and just lower the bandwidth, lower the amount of information on each side of the frequency you're going to receive. That's going to make you avoid what you have on that frequency. And I'll give you an example here. We're going to tune 6115, which is WWCR, and we're going to tune it in AM mode. Now let's put the audio here. And of course, it's not there tonight, so let's go to any other frequency that has a broadcast. Uh, let's take something stronger here. There we go. You got something on 5950. Now, you have bandwidths, of course. Let's put the bandwidth to the maximum 6 kilohertz from better audio. Notice that if I go... 5 kilohertz off, you're still hearing it. And that's because my bandwidth is too large. And so to improve my selectivity, I use the bandwidth of the radio to remove as much of the broadcast that I can. Filters are not necessarily perfect. Some are better than others. But having the ability to dish out a signal that's not supposed to be under frequency using bandwidths in this case, is very important, very good. So that's why the, today's DSP's receivers are interesting for that. They give you a high choice of different, um, of different bandwidths to use. A lot of radios will use also what's called narrow-wide, which are defined in advanced um, bandwidths for helping in selectivity, but we're going to talk about bandwidths and all of that in, in an, another video and different uh, aspects of it. I already talked about it a little bit. Uh, so selectivity has to do with several different things, but it's the ability of a receiver to pinpoint a signal and have you listen to only that signal when it's the only signal, of course, on the frequency uh, that you want to listen to. So I hope this helps. And of course, like I said, different receivers have different selectivity levels. Some are better than others. And um, how do you know this? Mostly by looking at reviews and what people talk about.
like in my videos, if I talk that one radio overloads more than another, it's part of the selectivity um, issue here. And of course, it has to do with other things at the same time, because we're going to talk about other, um, other words that can be used uh, in, the, uh, in the radio field. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and hope that you enjoyed this beginner series.